gamers all around the world. I have done two of these. I have done uh, a round one kind of Golden League $125,000 review of what happened. I've done the round two and now delayed round three. Round three happened nine days ago it finished. So I didn't do a review. I just didn't get to it. So I figured uh, we just had the first weekend of the playoffs. So I was like, okay, might as well just do round three and kind of give you guys my opinion on the playoffs and what's happening and, and so on and so forth. So round three, Golden League. Uh, basically, there's, once again, there were th there's three rounds. In each round, you get a point to qualify for the top eight playoffs. Your boy did it. I'm top eight. And now we're playing playoffs. I just played... My first match yesterday and this is gonna go for three more weeks and then we'll see who the winner is so uh, round three uh, I ended up being second um, the rules for this one were a bit different uh, compared to the first two the way it worked is now it doesn't matter if it was a best of three best of five or best of seven each player would pick four sieves. So if I pick Mongols, the enemy can't pick Mongols. They got to pick French or Delhi or, or whatever other sieve, right? So if I pick Mongol, they pick French or Delhi. That means that I cannot play French or Delhi for that series at all. So it was basically each player would pick four sieves. There were no mirrors because of this. Because it, when you pick a sieve, the opponent can't play it. And the map pool was uh, these maps, except French Pass, it was King of the Hill. So... Yeah, it, it was probably the most interesting round, I would say, compared to... I mean, round one was pretty cool. That had, like, basically only four maps, but every sim was available. Round two, probably my least favorite. It was, like, the off-meta, where the top three sims were banned. Didn't really enjoy that too much, to be honest. I thought it was going to be cool. Yeah. And then round three was, like I said, you pick four sims, uh, and then the opponent picks... Four sims. And I thought this idea was really cool. I thought it was going to provide for a lot of fine games. But very fast we've seen the issue in it, right? So in best of threes what would happen is you would see French, Mongol, Delhi, Rus all the time. Uh, because, you know, it's only two games potentially. So you want to pick your best sieves. So it was very predictable who's going to pick what. And it kind of turned into best of threes being the same sieves over and over. And then in best of fives and best of sevens... Basically, if you play, like, uh, Mongol first game, you could play Mongol again the fourth game. If you played French second game, you could play French again fifth game. Then what this turned into is a lot of players in this round were picking the most OP sieves on first two maps, so they could replay them again, thus ignoring one of the sieves that they picked initially. So... All in all, it was it was not bad. It, it was fun, I think. Um, I think it's good, and I'm glad that uh, Pesty from from Golden League, you know, uh, did these rounds with different rules and all that. Because I think it's fun to try out stuff. Maybe you find something really cool. But to be honest, I, I think I just like the good old seven eight sieves or eight sieves, one band or zero bands, and then you know you just uh, you just play the game, right? I think that's personally my favorite. Because I also think that the best player should be the one that can play all eight sieves and not like three sieves, right? Or four sieves. Because this is not StarCraft, it's not Warcraft, it's, uh, you know, it's Age of Empires and knowing, having to know like a lot of sieves is kind of a thing, right? Regarding the bracket, uh, I played uh, Kilarti, which by the way, since I played them, uh, this was April 23rd. Because this was played over two weekends, this specific bracket. He's improved a lot. And uh, I think he, if he keeps practicing, he might be the uh, the next uh, Chad Pumper gamer. But we'll see. I played Recon. I beat him 2-0. Then I played against Wham. I played against uh, Viper, which I won 3-2. Then I played Lucifron, who actually beat Marine Lord and Vortex. So he had a, he had a quite a good run. Um... So yeah, I beat Lucifron, and then in the Grand Grand Finals, I lost to Marine Lord 4th too. The games overall were... Um, I mean, I, I thought I played fine. Um, obviously, whenever you lose, you know, you, you say you didn't play well. Like, no one's ever lost and said I played perfect, right? So, yeah, I, I lost against Marine Lord 4th too. I think some of the games could have gone different. But I think it was, like, a game... Uh, four or five and 
the last three games, or the last two games, I can't remember exactly, I played pretty bad. I think it was especially the last two games. I played pretty bad. Um, other games, you know, it was kind of back and forth, but in the end, I lost. Luckily, it didn't affect my chances of advancing through the, through the playoffs. This is the, the loser's bracket. It didn't affect my chance of getting to playoffs uh, because I was already qualified. So I think I made uh, $1,250 for getting second in this one. And, you know, my goal was getting to top eight for the, for the playoffs to try to get $30,000 prize pool or money. But... Um, yeah, overall this round was fun. Probably first round was my favorite regarding rules, then the third one, then the second one. So yesterday, today is, uh, what is today? Today is Monday. I don't know when it's going to be up on YouTube. So yesterday, on Sunday, the playoffs have started. And as you can see, the prizes were already given to the players who dropped out. Uh, 125,000 prize pool split on top 40 players, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, obviously these guys you know get 50 bucks but you can see even 33rd to 39th is 250 which is pretty good for that placing i would say so now we're fighting for these monies so seventh uh, slash eighth place gets three and a half thousand fifth six gets uh four seven fifty fourth so if if i get to if i pass the group stage i'll uh you know the worst i can do is uh eight and a half thousand which is pretty good pretty good so the groups were announced and the groups or the groups already made they're not announced we already played one round and these are the groups so group a uh marine lord was first seed i was second seed viper was third seed and then uh, the muslim and wham were like six seven i think i think yeah Poppy Paul was 8th, and then uh, Lucifron and Vortex were 4th and 5th. So Group A is Marine Lord, Lucifron, Vortex, and Poppy Paw. Group B is me, Viper, Demuslim, and Wham. Wham, wham, thank you, ma'am. So, yeah, Marine Lord beat Poppy Paw 4-0. Um, I mean, I, I feel like these games, uh, you know, it could have been a, like a 2-2, and then who knows what could have happened, right? But... Marine Lord did manage to come back and some of them had a clean 4-0 uh, in the end. And, um, I mean, he was the favorite, right, in that match specifically. It's first seed versus eighth seed. Poppy Paul, like, is obviously a good player, but, uh, you know, Marine Lord is the first seed for a reason, so managed to win that one. And then Lucifron. Oh, zoom in, okay. Oh. And then Lucifron beating his brother again and the reason why i say this uh like like this is because i feel like for the first six months of aoe 4 vortex has always beaten lucifer i might be wrong i know there's like a match somewhere where lucifer actually beat him but i feel like like most of the time vortex has been beating lucifer they're brothers by the way if you guys don't know another fun fact poppy point wham are also bro brothers and um yeah, uh, Lucifer, I feel like, has improved uh, a shit ton and he's looking very, very strong. And, you know, in his opening match, best of seven, he beat Vortex. So, very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. I mean, it was almost a 4 0 as well. Like, this was a 3 0 lead, right? So, it could have been a 4 0, which then looks like extremely one sided. Uh, but, yeah. And then this upcoming Saturday. Poppy Paw is playing Vortex, and Marine Lord is playing against Lucifron. Which, honestly, if you asked me a month ago who's going to win that, I'd be like, Marine Lord, you know, easy clap. Now, I don't know. Like, uh, Marine Lord is obviously favorite, right? Like, I, I would assume most people think Marine Lord is going to win. But I actually think uh, Lucifron can beat him. Uh, he beat him in a, in a best of three, right, in round three already. And... Um, yeah, I think Lucifer can take him for sure. Poppy Paw and Vortex is going to be interesting because the only person... I can't remember actually. I haven't seen too many games of Vortex recently except the Lucifer one. So it's hard to judge his current skill level, like where he's at compared to like Poppy Paw and, and the players that are in Group B. 
So that's going to be an interesting match. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And then week three, which is not this Sunday, but Sunday after. Uh, you know, you have the remaining matches list from Pop Ball, Marine Lord, and Vortex. So for this group, basically, <clears throat> um, Marine Lord and Lucifron, pretty much if they each win a match, there's already a very, very good chance they'll be advancing. Obviously, there could be a three-way tie with 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, and then 0-3, right? Yeah, it's possible. But, um, and then the, the you know, the, the point difference basically is going to be looked at right here. But yeah, Marine Lord, you know, taking out, uh, uh, like I said, Poppy Paw, he could still, like, not advance if he loses to Vortus and Lustrum, which are very, uh, you know, both strong players. So we'll see how that turns out. But basically any game that, that happens is kind of like inching towards advancing or or, uh, or dropping out. But like I said, a three-way tie is possible. So every point in every game matters. Now group two, aka group B, is where I'm at. So I played my first match yesterday. I played against the Muslim and I ended up winning 4-1. Um, I lost the game on Hill and Dale. Um, so I can give you guys like a little bit more in depth regarding this one. I had an idea of what he was gonna do regarding like gameplay and it, it kind of went as I expected, maybe even even better than I expected in terms of how he played. Like I knew he is not like the most aggressive player. He kind of tends to play uh, like macro a bit more passive. And I mean, I I'm perfectly fine with that because I like playing late games. So I just kind of played for that and you know, it worked out. Uh, regarding his Civ pigs, they were kind of all over the place. Um, the only Civ I think I actually predicted correctly was Chinese Heal and Dale. And Dry Arabia was a toss-up between two Civs, so I wasn't sure which, which one is going to pick there. But he picked Mongol of King of the Hill, English on Highview, and he picked French on Altai. Which in my opinion are not the greatest maps for those Civs. Maybe he wanted to switch it up, maybe he wanted to surprise me, maybe he wanted to counter what I was doing. I'm not really sure, but... I mean, it worked out in my favor. The funny thing is, I knew that he's gonna pick China on Hill and Dale, but I thought I can win with Delhi because I haven't had a match against a high-level player on Hill and Dale recently in this in this specific uh, matchup, right? And I thought like Delhi is pretty good, but it was very like. Um, I mean, I captured all three sacred sites. I was getting the gold, and he went like song double TC, and then he just kind of pushed out and killed me. And I was like, well, I guess maybe this isn't a good matchup for Delhi after all. But once he picked China on Hill and Dale, I uh, because loser picks the map, I picked uh, King of the Hill because he has no China, and I have a pretty good strategy with China on that map. So I was like, yeah, I'll just go China. And uh, turns out it was a good pick. But yeah, that was. Uh, I'm very happy with the result because, like I said, it puts me one step closer to advancing, obviously, which is, uh, you know, my plan in groups is to just get out of the groups and, and on to the playoffs. Um, and then Viper played against Wham. It was pretty. From the games that I've seen, and I haven't watched every game. Uh, the first game was probably the most like competitive kind of back and forth and I don't know what happened when Wem just died like I thought he was winning I was like wow he's crushing but then he just kind of fell apart in like two seconds um, and just died but uh, yeah I, I would say overall it was kind of one-sided uh, uh, from the games like I said from the games that I've seen very like no kind of like worrying from Wiper that he's about to lose or something like that. And uh, yeah, he managed to get a 4-1 as well. So we had a 4-2, 4-1, 4-1, and a 4-0. Next week, aka this Sunday, I am playing against Wham. Um, and if I manage to win that, I'll be with two wins. So I think even if I lose against Viper in the third round, I should be advancing. 
assuming he also uh like for example if viper beats the muslim and then viper beats me i still advance because i beat the muslim and if i beat wham right so <coughs> obviously i'm gonna try to win no matter what right but it's very important for me to win this match because then it's gonna be a lot uh, more relaxed and a lot more chill for me if i lose that one then i pretty much have to win against viper in order to advance so yeah um that that is the the way of competitive uh, tournaments you know you can uh, do really well you can win and then you drop the ball once you're out if both you and viper win your matches aren't round three matches basically relevant well they're seedings right they're seeds so for example marine lord is probably like the strongest player from group a so that's kind of kind of weird because if we're both 2-0 and then we know who marine lord is going to be play like where marine lord is going to be placing both players will prefer to not play him in semi-finals right so yeah but if marine lord wins like his group obviously even though viper and i are both advancing we want to win to not play against marine lord in semi-finals to get a quote-unquote weaker opponent so we can advance to the finals, right? So, yeah. But overall, I, I think I have uh, good chances of making it out of the group. Obviously, you know, I'm going to prepare strategies. And at the end of this, when it's all done, I'm going to show you my uh, paint presentations that I did for myself with the Civ picks and all that, if anyone is interested. But yeah, I think... Uh, I honestly don't know who's going to advance from uh, each group. Like, they're kind of, like, clear favorites. But um, also, like, you know, surprises, I think, always happen and uh, can happen. So we will see how it goes. Nobody wants to face Marine Lord. I mean, it's the same way out of way around, right? If, if let's say, me and whoever advance, right? Like, let's say it was the other way around where i'm advancing or viper is advancing people also not want to play viper or me they would want to play someone else because why would you want to play against stronger players in semifinals, right so yeah anyway that is the update for the round three plus the uh the playoffs that has started uh again i'll i think i'm playing every sunday if i am not mistaken from 5 p.m cest this sunday and then the sunday after i start after the first match so if you want to catch it live that's where it's at youtube gamers thank you for watching twitch gamers let's keep going